Welcome to this video in the Windows Server 2012 video series which is going to look at the new graphical user interface we have for the Active Directory Recycle Bin. I'm Paul Gregory. Here you can see we've got Server Manager. It's focused on Active Directory domain services and we're going to use this to launch the Active Directory Administra Administrative Center. So this has been around a little while now as, as a piece of software and as always provides us with fe features like multiple uh, forest management and so on. In order to use the recycle bin, we need to make sure that we're in a minimum uh, forest uh, functional level of Windows Server 2008 R2. So you'll see here that I'm actually in Windows Server 2012 uh, forest as a domain uh, functional level and also Windows Server 2012 forest functional level, so more than high enough. So you can see straight away I have the enable recycle bin option on the uh, UI. I can press that feature and that would then enable the recycle bin and initiate replication around your entire forest. Once forest replication is complete, you can refresh and you would then be able to start using the recycle bin feature. Bear in mind, once you've enabled the recycle bin, you cannot disable it. So you'll notice the enable options grayed out um, on the right hand side, and there's no option to actually say uh, disable the Active Directory recycle bin. So only objects that are deleted after you've enabled it uh, can actually be uh, re recovered. So let's go in and create a couple of objects. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create an Active Directory user. So we'll imaginatively call this user Recycle User and give them a corresponding uh, username, so our user. If you've used the um, Active Directory User uh, sorry, the Active Directory Administrative Center console before, you'll see a lot of this is very similar to the previous version. So we can obviously save this user object. We'll also go and do the same with a group. So we will actually go and create ourselves a, a new group and we'll imaginatively call this the Active Directory, uh, sorry, the Recycle User Group. And we'll also make the user a member of that group. So we'll hit the new group option, call the group Recycle Space Group. Obviously we could go and set description, other properties that we might want to do. But what we'll do is we'll go and add the uh, Recycle user as a member of that group. So just adding the user account in now. Done. So we now have our new user and our new group, uh, which we're going to use for testing. But obviously we could have used any of the predefined uh, users and computers that were in Active Directory. Uh, I've just chosen to create new objects just purely for the demonstration purposes. So looking at our two objects, so the uh, recycle group and the recycle user, if I go and delete the recycle user to start with, say yes to confirm deletion of that object. We then want to have a look at the recovery process. So unlike Tombstone reanimation, which we had in 2008 and earlier, all you really basically got back was the SID for the object. You can see now in the deleted, uh, deleted objects container, I actually had the user account. I was able to actually click on the restore object and the user object has been returned to the, the organizational unit or container that it was deleted from. So you can see the user exists. All of the sort of properties have, have been recreated. And if I come down to the group membership, you can see the object still exists. If I delete the user again, and again, just go back to the deleted objects container, you can see that I do have a restore to function. So if I wanted to restore it to an alternative location, I could also do that as well. So you're not worried about that. So we'll just cancel that box and I'll restore it back to the original location. If we now go and look at the two objects we've got, so the recycle user and the recycle group, let's delete the recycle user again and we'll delete the recycle group. Obviously, if I go to the deleted objects container again, I will see that I have two objects which have been deleted, which are recoverable. Now, the key element here is obviously the recycle user was a member of the recycle group. So if I look at the properties of the object, you'll notice that we really don't have any of the AD attribute properties. It's the uh, object name um, and the uh, sequence number for the object. If I restore the user, and go back to the user's container, <laughs> you'll actually see 
uh, the users there. And if I come down to the member of, obviously not going to be a member of the recycle uh, group because that group doesn't exist. It's still a deleted object. If I recover the group and then go back and review the user object, what we should actually see in the user object is the group membership has also been re-established as well. So we look at the properties of the user and we can see that group membership has been re-established. If I delete the two objects again, you will also see uh, we do support uh, multiple uh, object recovery. So I am capable of actually highlighting multiple objects in this list and again, uh, restoring them back to their original locations by hitting restore or actually restore them to alternate locations by using the restore to function. And obviously that would recover uh, both of those objects. Obviously I've used this with um, users and groups, but obviously we could recover organizational units and the objects inside organizational units as well. Uh, and obviously computer objects could be recovered this way as well. So I hope this has been useful for you to actually just see the recycle bin in action. Thank you for your time. Please feel free to email me or follow me as Paul L. Gregory on Twitter.